Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the Uniswap liquidity mining program. So this has been out for about 10 days. There's about 50 days left in this rewards program. This launched along with the new Uni governance token. And this was a big surprise because Uniswap is uh, always one of the top tier DeFi applications on Ethereum. So you can see here, they currently have over $2 billion uh, in total value locked, which is uh, all of the liquidity aggregated on Uniswap. So when it first launched, it got a lot of attention because uh, they gave away 400 free Uni to anyone who had ever traded on Uniswap or attempted a trade. Uh, and that's for those who directly uh, interacted with the Uniswap application. Anyways, beyond the free Uni that all previous Uniswap traders and liquidity providers were able to claim, uh, we're gonna focus on this liquidity mining program. So first off, I'm gonna show how to forecast uh, whether or not it's worth me joining any one of these pools because these are very liquid pools and the more liquidity, the more competition there is to earn those unis. Second, I'll show how to become a liquidity provider in one of these, assuming that the numbers make sense to me for me to participate as an LP. And then third, I'll show how to stake it so that I can ultimately claim the uni that I'm earning uh, while being a liquidity provider. So this tutorial assumes that uh, one has not become a liquidity provider yet. The few key details to know are that there are four different pools and each pool is Ether paired with DAI, USDC, Tether, and wrapped Bitcoin. And each one of these pools is earning 583,333 uni per week. So assuming uni is at around $4.75 to $5, if I take 583,333 times five, it's about $3 million per week per pool. And again, that's dependent on the price of Uni, which is a token that you know is trading on DEXs. And so that price can fluctuate and, and hence the value of those rewards weekly could go down if you're measuring in US dollars or it could go up. And the first question I ask myself is, uh, which of these tokens am I comfortable having exposure to? Or which do I want exposure to? And so let's say that I have DAI, and of course I'm, I'm very exposed to Ether already. So, uh, and so participating in this pool makes sense to me, uh, just from, from a standpoint of what I want exposure to. Uh, next, I'm gonna look at how much is deposited. So there's about 360 million. And then uh, beyond that, each one of these pools is earning that 583,000 uni. And so if I pull out my calculator and I think about how much liquidity am I going to provide, which in this case, let's assume I'm gonna provide uh, $1,000 in total worth of ether and die. So if I take 1,000, and I divide by uh, 358,864,071. This is the percentage uh, of the pool that I'm gonna own. And so I'm gonna take that, that proportion of the pool that I would own. And this assumes that uh, this liquidity remains constant, which it won't. There's a chance this will continue to grow. It also could shrink as well but I'm gonna multiply that by 583,333 uni. So weekly with $1,000 of liquidity, assuming that this number is uh, somewhat constant or at least uh, you know, around that by the end of this week, uh, I'm gonna earn about 1.62 uni. And if uni uh, is today around $5, I multiply that by five, I'm earning about $8 per week. Now there are uh, 50 days left in this. So 50 days, what divided by uh, seven days per week is about 
uh, seven. So I, I guess uh, if we're talking about how much I might earn, that's seven weeks times $8, or maybe it was 1.62 uni times uh, seven weeks. So I'm gonna earn about 11 uni. So that's the sort of simple uh, calculation I do before I enter a pool, just to consider whether or not this is worth me adding liquidity. And I think this is the sort of calculation that saves me time and gas money uh, instead of just entering a pool, not knowing what I might earn. So let's assume that I'm content with the forecasted amount of uni I might earn based on that little calculation I did. So what I've done is gone to zapper.fi slash invest. I've searched under explore opportunities, ETH. These are all of the zaps across uh, Uniswap, Balancer, Curve, and uh, yearn.finance. And you'll notice that there is my die ETH pool for Uniswap V2. So I'm going to add liquidity to this. And here's where I have the option of choosing what I wanna zap into the pool. Now, because it uses DAI or Ether, uh, it's easy for me to just zap in uh, DAI or Ether. Uh, that means that I won't have to have any trade happen in the background, which saves me some fees. But it is uh, worth noting that these other more liquid tokens like USDC, Tether, Link, and Wrapped Bitcoin those are tokens that Zapper will normally swap for me in the background as it's adding that liquidity to the pool in a 50-50 proportion of DAI plus Ether. One other consideration is that if I add DAI to this pool, uh, I'm going to have to run through two transactions. I have to approve spending DAI for my wallet because it's an ERC-20 token versus if I use Ether, uh, it'll be one transaction just because I don't have to give permission to send Ether uh, into the zap. So gas prices are a little over 100 guay today. Uh, that's relatively less than it's been lately, but it's still uh, a lot. And so I'm going to go ahead and save on my gas costs and I'm just going to put in Ether. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm actually going to put in just a little bit more here because gas is going to cost me probably about 0.05 Ether here. And I just want to make this transaction more worthwhile uh, since I'm paying a little bit more in gas. So I'll put in 0.5 Ether. Uh, I am going to split that with this zap into 50% DAI, 50% Ether. And then I'm also going to set the slippage tolerance to 1%. Now, this is something that normally, once you set it, you probably won't have to change this as often. And this is a more liquid pool, so I'm not concerned about slippage. But in less liquid pools, this is uh, a setting that can save me because Zapper will prevent me from zapping in if the slippage is going to be more than 1%. And if I don't want to incur uh, you know, any sort of like loss from that really bad rate. All right, so we can hit confirm. And I'll do one MetaMask transaction. So you can see here that I'm zapping in 0 0.5. Uh, the fees that I'm paying here are strictly to do with uh, the uh, network fees for Ethereum. And then I'm going to pay a total of 0.57 Ether. And based on the Etherscan gas tracker and the ETH gas station, uh, a gas price of around 120 guay will get this through in about two minutes. So this seems like the right gas price for me. So I'll go ahead and hit confirm. Okay, so my transaction went through. You can see that I zapped in 0 0.5 Ether and it swapped it for a 50-50 mix of DAI and Ether and then deposited that into Uniswap uh, into that ETH DAI pool. So now I can move on to actually staking the DAI ETH uh, Unipool LP token. So there's this option to stake in green. It's under staking opportunities under my invest tab in Zapper. This is the same thing as if I were on the Uniswap app uh, where I would go to Uni and then, actually, let's go back here so you can see this. If I'm on the Uni page, you can see here the ETH die pool. If I click deposit, 
I'm already an LP here and I can deposit those tokens because I've got 4.0118 uni v2 LP tokens. I'm required to stake these or else I'm not going to earn uni. So this is an important step. Uh, luckily, in Zapper, I've already got it set up here under my staking opportunities. So I'm being told that I have the opportunity to stake that. So I'm going to choose my gas setting under the widget icon. Checking the Etherscan gas tracker, it says that the transaction should go through in about two minutes. So we'll click confirm. So this is the first transaction, which is giving permission to actually move my, my uni tokens. Uh, so there's two transactions required here. I'm going to leave it at 120 uh, GUE for my gas price. I can choose to leave the permission at what is essentially unlimited here. Uh, it is common to go here and put in the exact amount. This is something I commonly do, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So this is the next transaction, and I'm actually going to wait for that other transaction to confirm just because my fear with gas prices being as volatile as, as they've been is that if I confirm this at a gas price of 120 GUE, if the gas price jumps and the other transaction gets stuck, then I'll have two transactions stuck. So I tend to wait until the other confirms and then I will go ahead and check the gas price to confirm this and push it through. Okay, so the first of the two transactions to stake my uni LP token has gone through. So let's go back to Zapper and I can find that MetaMask uh, transaction that I was prompted with. And so the gas price is estimated to be 120 GUE. So I'm going to check out the Etherscan gas tracker. And the gas tracker tells me that uh, 125 GUE should get this transaction through in about two minutes. So let's go back to Zapper and let's click MetaMask. And I'll go ahead and risk it here. I'm, I'm just a little bit under that price. I think it'll still go through at 120. And so I'm all set to go. So I'll hit confirm. All right, so I'm back and I paid uh, about $5 in gas for that last transaction to stake. So in total, between three transactions, I spent $5 on gas, I spent $1.92, and I spent about $17. So that was about 0.06 Ether in total. So let's go back to my Zapper uh, investment dashboard. And if I scroll down to current investments, there's the Dai ETH pool. Uh, you notice it's staked now and I have the ability to claim rewards or unstake this in the future. If I were to unstake it, I would then have the ability to withdraw from the pool or rebalance to uh, another pool. So if I click here, you can see the uni rewards that I'm earning. And so it's only been collecting for a few minutes, but you can already see what I've earned here. And if I were to hit confirm, it's one transaction for me to claim that uni reward. So just to recap, I did a calculation first of which of these pools uh, I might be interested to become a liquidity provider in. Uh, I know these are the four with the little tractor icon. Uh, these are four pools that allow me to also stake and claim rewards in my Zapper dashboard. I took the liquidity uh, and calculated how much uni I might earn per week and then once I decided the numbers made sense, I added liquidity to one of the pools. And in this case, I used Ether because it's a single transaction which, which saved me some gas. Then after that, I went up to staking opportunities. And before I staked it, it was an option here and I hit stake. And then that's what led me to uh, showing that I have my DAI ETH liquidity provision staked where I can claim rewards whenever I want as they accrue here. And then I can unstake this in the future whenever I'm ready to exit the pool. So in order to get out of this liquidity pool, I do have to unstake it first, 
then I will have a withdraw option show up here, which will allow me then to withdraw from the dye ether pool. All right, let's go ahead and recap the risks of everything I did here. So first off, I am interacting with Uniswap and I'm interacting with some smart contracts uh, that allow me to zap in and stake through Zapper. So good to be aware of the fact that I have exposure to smart contract risk on both Uniswap uh, and Zapper. Second risk is considering the fact that I did put in 50% DAI and 50% Ether. And if the price of Ether were to skyrocket or if it were to crash, uh, I would experience impermanent loss. And that impermanent loss would mean that uh, as the price of Ether falls, I would be buying Ether. And as the price of Ether uh, goes up rapidly, I would actually be selling it to traders who are buying that Ether. The third risk I think about is governance compromise. Uh, we are in the early days of this new Uniswap governance. And so I just need to consider that, uh, I guess there could be uh, challenges to that. And if uh, one entity or a few were to, you know, gather a lot of voting power, I guess they could put through a proposal that doesn't really benefit the community as a whole. And if you wanna learn more about the governance uh, of Uniswap using the Uni token, uh, you can go to uniswap.org slash blog slash uni. This is the original blog post from September 16th uh, when the uni token launched. The last risk that I consider is uh, the risk of a stable coin like DAI, USDC, or Tether, or a pegged asset like wrapped Bitcoin. Uh, any one of those, if the peg were to fail, that would not be good for the liquidity that I'm holding but these are four of the most popular pegged assets uh, in DeFi that have, I would say, been battle tested at this point. So I'm not too concerned about it for my own liquidity here. All right, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions about this video, comment on YouTube or you can comment on my Twitter. Uh, also, if you check out a new live streaming DeFi show I'm doing called Yield TV, it's powered by my team at Zapper. So daily on tv.zapper.fi, we're doing uh, this live stream, which will cover uh, current topics in DeFi. It will also often involve an interview with uh, members of the DeFi community. And so this is just a, a new way for us to engage and help folks to learn more about DeFi. If you join the live stream, we always set aside at least 15 to 30 minutes for questions. So feel free to join us there and would love to uh, see what questions you have and if we can help.